an entrepreneur that we are going to interact with today is uh, Jashan Bhumkar, a very interesting name. Saujan is the name of his company. They are into colors. And what they exactly do, let me ask this to the young man himself. So everywhere that you stay around you, there is color in some or the other way. Every subject trait, that whether it is your printing ink or from the time you wake up to you go to bed, everything that you encounter, either the walls of your home, your car, the cosmetic products that you use, your soap, detergent, or anything that you read, the printing inks of that, they all have. How do you manage that culture gap or the age gap or the experience gap with the organization seniors? I think direct communication, one-on-one -on -one direct talk communication. To so I hate, I hate it. I hate the culture of uh, emails, long, convoluted, round and round, very po polite on the front, but actually passive aggressive emails. You're internationally educated, you're globally traveled, you do businesses in more than 50 countries of the world. So what are the new decisions that benefited your organization after you joined it? Hi friends, this is Agnello Rajesh here. I'm chairman for Global St. Angelo's group of companies and my current passion is investing in interesting and exciting growth stories of India and growth entrepreneurs of India. Inspiring Conversations is a very interesting journey where uh, I have learned a lot from the people that I've interacted. India is on a very glorious path of growth and uh, it's a combination of building entrepreneurs uh, companies which are making a difference to the global map and the global scenario and it is so pleasing to interact with entrepreneurs who are young at age, experienced, uh, have a global vision, operate globally and are uh, proud Indians. An entrepreneur that we are going to interact with today is uh, Jashan Bhumkar, a very interesting name. Saujan is the name of his company, they are into colors and what they exactly do, let me ask this to the young man himself. So. Uh, just uh, tell us about your company, uh, what you exactly do, because it's a very niche area. So, uh, thank you so much for the introduction and also for having me here and my sincere namaskar to all of our wonderful viewers. Uh, like you correctly said, Saujanya, we've been all about color for uh, over 40 years now. It's a very, very niche space, as also you rightly said. Essentially, we're a specialty chemicals company. Our products, our end products uh, look very beautiful and colored. They impart a lot of uh, vibrancy to various applications like paints and coatings, which has been our main area since my grandfather's time also alluded uh, to, to, to that. Um, then we, we are also, everywhere that you see around you, there is color in some or the other way. Every subject trait, that, whether it is your printing ink or from the time you wake up to you go to bed, everything that you encounter, either the walls of your home, your car, the cosmetic products that you use, your soap, detergent, or uh, anything that you read, the printing inks of that, they all have... Uh, Even we are pretty colorful. We are we are very colorful <laughs> and, and uh, I can see that you breath for the occasion. <laughs> oh my God, the mask is very dashing. Um, now, but yes, uh, everywhere you, you see color and in the end, uh, it's a very niche specialty chemical application. There's a lot of science behind uh, it and that's what we've, uh, you know, aimed at perfecting over the last four decades. Uh, at some point, we realized that, okay, color uh, is the end product, but uh, it's essentially a chemical and the world of chemicals is so beautiful that there is so much that more that you can do with it. So much more larger impact that you can have, you can make people's lives better, health uh, better. You could also contribute a lot of value to uh, many different applications and industries. And that's the journey which we're on now, where we are uh, calling it color and beyond. Where we're going to continue to grow our color business globally and to many different applications. And we've also moved into uh, other specialty chemical ingredients which uh, were quite easy for us to make given our background in chemicals so, and, and we're exploring different exciting things uh, with them. Excellent, excellent. So uh, friends, uh, Asian companies is one of my favorite companies. I really admire that company on the policies and system that that company has grown up uh, into and it's a very admirable company world over. Uh, very heartening to know that his grandfather when he started this company in 1984 he was working with Asian paint. So now I know where the quality, the vision uh, and the growth aspiration comes from. That's the Asian paints as an organization. And Dan, sorry, that's the company which we still admire today for all that. It's an amazing organization, amazing organization yeah. for the systems and procedures that they use. And I'm sure your organization has adapted to the same policies and procedures. Uh, you have been born into this company. Absolutely. Right from childhood, you have seen this business. Absolutely. Your mom is doing the same activity uh, that you are into currently, the same company. So you always uh, envisioned being a part of this organization and so you become a chemical engineer? Absolutely. It has been my first love uh, and a first love and true love. And uh, in your mind, right? Yes, I do. My right from my childhood. And uh, 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 I was very close to my grandfather, who okay. was no longer with us in the last 15 years now. But I was very, very close to him. In fact, 
uh, my decision to study chemical engineering was also to uh, follow his footsteps, you know, because he inspired me so much. Um, in my childhood, my grandfather would uh, carry me in his arms and take me after school or on weekends to uh, our factory and show me around different chemical processes. Of course, that time, now we operate Asia's largest color manufacturing unit, it's fully automated and everything. The factories were nothing like that at that time. We had very humble beginnings. But for what it was, and he was a very technically sound person. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's renowned and remembered even today for his uh, brilliance in, in the technology part of it. So he would uh, talk to me a lot all uh, day long and show me around different chemical processes. And uh, he inculcated that love uh, for me. So I always felt that this world is mine. And uh, there is, you know, I would like to be part of it um, in a more significant way as I do. And now that I'm in the business for eight years, I think it is, uh, it is, uh, uh, it's become much beyond something very personal. Of course, I have a personal attachment to it from my grandfather's legacy and everything. But I also believe that uh, in the world today to solve all the pressing problems of, uh, you know, society, environment, uh, all the needs, the healthcare needs of people. Uh, chemicals provide a very um, beautiful platform. They have in the chemical revolution, the quick solution, deep solution, and relevant solution, sustainable solution, everlasting solution. Even if you talk about electric vehicles, they are impossible unless you figure out how to make a battery paste the, the precise composition out of, uh, you know, uh, the lithium metal that is there. And this can be translated to everything, right? From the bright red lipstick to to the uh, life-changing cancer drug, everything is in the chemical space and as an MFM, everything has a color, but even if, it's not, even if it's not colored, then it has a chemical. So the deeper we go in that space, uh, it is unlocking a lot more possibilities to do good and to do better to solve a lot of blessing problems. Excellent. So, so, so you had your grandfather from whom you learned so much. It, absolutely. It's visible in the way you're planning. Of course, I learned all my agreement yeah. yeah. today. Yes. Absolutely. What else is your learning curve? Because being a technical industry, you really need to be ahead uh, every single day. You need to be performing better than what you performed the previous day. Absolutely. So what's your learning curve in this technical sector? I think uh, the, the learning curve, uh, uh, it's twofold. One is for me personally, of course, I've learned a lot from pretty much everybody I've interacted with, from our customers, suppliers, to our own people. There have been uh, people uh, who have been working with my grandfather and then my mother. They have been with us since day one of the company. Wow. Or some people who've been there for 20 years. That's true. And it's about the culture of your company. Absolutely. Absolutely. There are a lot of people who, you know, seen everything and they've made everything happen. So I learn a lot from them every day. There's also a lot of uh, skill gaps that uh, that uh, we saw over time that okay we are here now but if we want to be there there is all of this that needs to be bridged so we also hired a lot of great talent uh, uh, in, in recent times who have with uh, and and uh, the learnings from them they come from very different cultures different organizations they've done a huge body of work in other industries which now we want to be part of so that learning has also been very very interesting for me and then of course we try to translate all of that learning uh, into an organi organizational um, uh, uh, way uh, uh, in an organization wide way also um, the other thing is uh, that uh, uh, I think R&D and technical focus is very important in our it's an ongoing process it's an ongoing process so how closely we can uh, sync with the market, how closely we can sync in the market. And there are two things again in that. that one, you should be able to do exactly what your customer needs. And secondly, go beyond that also, because often if you're the expert, then nobody else knows better than you, uh, you know, uh, what is needed. So how to then one up that and uh, all the work that it takes in terms of technology, research, innovation to the, you know, that, like the level is in the details. So, uh, 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 to to that level of detail, that is something which again we've been on. And chemicals is definitely a very detailed industry. Like, uh, uh, do you also learn from your competition on how to move forward? Chemicals is a is a competition a good teacher to you? Uh, uh, I, I will answer that question because it's a very very interesting uh, interesting thing. But like you said, chemicals is indeed a detailed field because if you have a formulation, there will be something which uh, is hundred percent of the thing is like a it's a medicine, for example. It will have um, something that is 50%, the active drug or whatever. But then there will be these special performance additives that are in there, which go 0.01%, 0.02%. But if they are not there, uh, uh, the whole formulation will break down and then it doesn't perform as well as right. uh, it is uh, supposed to. So that detailed thing is, of course, uh, very, very relevant. Um, 
today the competitive landscape in the chemical industry is very very fascinating and interesting and and uh, if somebody takes a magnifying lens and zooms into a day will find a lot of funny things there actually where at once a company can be your supplier a company the same company can be your customer and at the same company can be your competitor excellent so it, <laughs> because so you will only find different niches you have to be very mindful about what you're connecting very, with them very mindful and also sometimes just open because you you do great at what you're doing there is opportunity and then you capture that opportunity so that is the way we really look at it today uh, the way we are leading saujanya is that uh, we are of course we are not foolish to ignore competition we we are very very well aware of that mm-hmm. uh, but um, uh, we fo- look more inward than look that okay what is other capabilities what are the things that we should be doing in which we cannot eliminate competition that is the way some competition is healthy but at least can we localize it to some regions of the world only that okay we'll compete with this company in southeast asia we'll compete in this company in the cosmetics industry only we'll compete with this company in the decorative paint industry so segmented your competition identified identified and then mapping them and then making sure that either you are learning something from them or they are you are teaching them something yeah sometimes in them a lot we <laughs> very recently i was at a trade show and uh, the uh, our competitor actually walked up to me and said, and, and said that uh, you know uh, 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 i'm so and so i'm from so and so company i'm the director and whatever and you have learned you so many Sleep less night. But then we both had a very good laugh about it. I said that okay, thank you. I take that as a very good. Well, as long as you are doing that, you are walking the right path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Dhiruva Ambani used to always uh, have people better than him, smarter than him, but working with him for him. Uh, what is your mindset about uh, engaging uh, talent for your growth, uh, growth of your organization? What is your mindset about it? I uh, I completely have the same philosophy. I think there is so much to learn from uh, the the uh, large capabilities and the body of work that people. uh do and and uh, that they uh, they they can do we just need to create as a company our as company environment for the best people to come there feel themselves feel their best selves bring their whole selves to work and then thrive there so uh, it's easier said than done of course you yourself built many successful businesses so you know that though that is the intention uh, it is often very very uh, hard to actually do but uh, there are a lot of things that we are trying to to a make our own company then the larger chemical industry of happening place to be you know mm-hmm. i keep saying that okay a lot of people who studied chemical engineering with me got mass hired uh, in a lot of other industries hardly anyone came to chemicals and mm-hmm. you think that okay maybe it is our fault that people don't perceive chemicals this way and what can we do about it to make somebody uh, I, I, you know uh, feel like doing uh, uh, or maybe the passion which i have how can i translate that into uh the larger picture of you know the landscape of our company and then that excellent so in order to play you must have people who are uh, smarter than you smarter and working as you and for you and then you must let them do their thing absolutely uh, and how do you define delegation uh, and uh, authority matlab uh do you delegate with authority or do you delegate and still control it how do you operate with your team i think uh, a balance is me. i think firstly like i i never thought of Uh, myself or as uh, you know i think that we are all surgeons that whoever is there since 25 years and you know and whoever so we also hire new people with that criteria that okay like there are so many talented people that are there right now but if if i don't feel that same comfort uh, as i do with somebody who's been with us for 25 years uh, uh, then uh, i think that's going to be a cultural clash how do we manage that cultural clash because you are a third generation entrepreneur and like you said that your people have got longevity with your organization yes. so how do you manage that culture gap or the age gap or the experience gap with your organization seniors i think direct communication one on one direct communication so i hate i hate it i hate the culture of uh, emails long convoluted round and round very for like on the front but actually passive aggressive emails and the moment i see even like a semblance of that in our organization that it has to go you have to meet the person over coffee or a video call or whatever you and just have it face to face is the free experience your expectations yeah, we are real people we are real people and people are 
uh, people never intend anything bad. You know, they have inherent faith in the goodness of people in general. Also, I am that way. Some people might call me naive as well. Uh, but uh, uh, but I really do believe that, and I think we are very lucky at Sajna to have very wonderful people with us. I fully believe that they really want to do their best. So sometimes, so uh, um, uh, if if you uh, magnify the 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 humanness of the person, make that feel valued, uh, then uh, 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 then really they step up and they really take a lot of ownership. And how is it to work with your mom? It's wonderful. Beautiful. I think I'm very really talk about roles and responsibilities. What is the kind of role and responsibility that you have taken at the organization? I think like that's very um it's hard to distinguish that now because over time I think when I started first it was uh it was uh that okay, on the things I, I came into something which was established. I was trying to learn part of that on the side and then I also I was opening up lot of new applications, which is why Earlier we were only into paints. Then now we are into cosmetics and so many printing and so on. Already, you know, all the sector, all the sector now which we were needs color. Yeah, so they all came after I was in the business. Now I was. Oh, so that is the addition that you created. That is, I, it happened when I was there because okay. when I came, I realized that okay, we are in paints. We are so we are a market leader in paints. So why not in other things also? And then of course everybody uh, was very uh, beautifully aligned with that vision and they they kind of uh, uh, aligned with it in a very good way. But uh, uh, so at that time the roles were very very clear, right? And 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 I had just come into the business, so though I had grown up with it, there are still so many things that nobody actually ever told me. There are so many things which uh, I always knew, but the practicalities, the 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 nitty gritties of the business of running a huge chemical operation, the supply chain complexity. Until you're in the business, you will never understand how complex the supply chain is and the value chain is uh, in 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 that industry. So, what was the solution that you created? Uh, so, no, I, so the only solution is to just jump into it and uh, take it on. There is no other way. You have to jump into it and take it on. And uh, I think uh, with the uh, uh, my mom, she has been uh, incredible in so many ways because mm-hmm. uh, she. Um, what was the strongest point in running this organization? She her strongest point. Uh, her, so firstly, she let me be. Basically, she let me be, and she she let me make my own mistakes while having my back. She never controlled the outcome, and maybe there were some things which uh, which uh, uh, she knew would fail, but she let that happen so that I learn from it. There are some things which were genuinely new and surprising to her, so they she embraced with open arms. That has been the beautiful part. The strongest point of my mother, I would say, in running a business is uh, empathy, which is very, very rare. Excellent. She was in, in the own, as a woman, I don't know that comes naturally. She is one of the, yes, but a lot of women entrepreneurs purposely tone it down because they feel they'll be taken advantage of and everything. And in my childhood, I saw my mother struggle with this conundrum that, okay, if I'm too soft, people won't take seriously. And if I'm too hard, then okay, maybe I'll get the outcome. But I won't feel like myself. I can't sleep at night peacefully. So she at some point evolved into this beautiful leader who is uh, so empathetic where uh, where uh, she she's, uh, uh, she made a firm decision saying that um, I'm a kind person and I'm going to be all about kindness. And I'll show the world that it is possible to grow a company to a multinational stage just through kindness. Wow, that was that. Yeah, Tabna sharing. There's a man. Tabna sharing. She's in. Absolutely. Absolutely. The only industrial is we are in a hardcore chemical plant. There are only they were only men around. There are it's still it's pretty well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that's the value which uh, I I have come to see a lot of. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a overwhelming and overarching value system that I would like. But it's very well explained uh, by you yeah, that people. you grow business with kindness. Absolutely. No, not necessary to drive business with Absolutely. a stick and Absolutely. stern voice. Even kindness can give you growth. It can give you the best growth. This yeah. is the best point about your mom that you express. Absolutely. As a young entrepreneur and playing a leadership role, what's your strongest point in your leadership skills? What do you consider as your strength? Uh, <laughs> That is very hard for me to answer. It as per that, what do you mind. enjoy doing as a part of your role to your organization? Which is the room that you enjoy uh, working on? There are entrepreneurs who love branding. There are entrepreneurs who love marketing. There are entrepreneurs who love entrepreneur. HR. No, I think as an entrepreneur, you have to love everything, and you have to love your business. You have to love the opportunities that your business uh, provides, and the the, uh, the uh, and and I think I do have a lot of passion in turning all those opportunities into reality. 
so i think that is uh, essentially what uh, drives me and uh, 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 i'm also a people's person i think that is so that hr is your you i won't say hr i would not when i say one more is hr uh, every entrepreneur very suffers majority of the times is i have seen entrepreneurs who are great at tech but when it comes to managing their colleagues and senior team management and uh, support teams they become a little harsh they are misunderstood they are not communicating right no so, so i think that is any entrepreneur needs to have an idea angle yeah so i think the empathy part and the really like wanting the best for people and then really wanting the best for all of us so you may i with people and you yeah. direct yeah. them you yeah. and at the same time that uh, you know the the given the uh, age and stage of life that i am i am in i can't just motivate through words i have to motivate through actions and leading by example so that has been something going yeah. with performance with performance so for that i have to also be on top of it the way i conduct myself the way i am prepared every day when i show up to work i am really like i i take each day as a as a learning experience a growing experience as a way to make some difference to you know to to everyone to the company itself so i think that is another um, uh, and and uh, i think like uh, I would say another strong point is the energy level. Like I think that there is a lot that's, of that's that or the your young your energy level is when yeah yeah, yeah yeah I think knowing so. you as a person it'll be uh, the same for and, the future. I have to be infused into a your team into a to your team into a. What is the new decision that you took after you joined the organization? You are internationally educated. You are globally traveled. You do businesses in more than fifty uh, countries of the world. So what are the new decisions that benefited your organization after you joined it? Eight years back. So there were many decisions, but the overarching lens was that uh, that if we just look at what we have and starting to um, add one 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 part to it, that is one way of thinking. But if we look at the whole opportunity and then start working backwards, then that opens up so many possibilities uh, uh, that are there. So that was the main lens, and then through that, of course, the decisions were uh, 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 you know how to. Groom my existing talent. How to build new, uh, new capabilities through new talent. How to uh, further our technical. How to go deeper into our field and really, really, you know, be unmatched expert there. Then to take all that, like a team, you go deep with the people and expertise, and then you go wide into different other industries that are there. And uh, then, then the main key decision that uh, that that I think has transformed everything. It has even the way we think and talk about ourselves has mm-hmm. changed. Uh, uh, Has to move uh, beyond color. I think that was the thing. That most thing where we said that okay, so that is where diversity comes out. Where we would all say that we are a color company, and we were that. We are still that, but now we say we are a specialty chemical business. Excellent. That, that has been a huge shift. So diversification has happened, Absolutely. and this diversification is it forward integration, backward integration, or a new segment altogether? It is a uh, it is a uh, backward and lateral integration where we kind of uh, we kind of uh, uh, saw that. The so chemistry is so beautiful. For example, that you uh, that if you have one molecule and uh, you know you have a carbon ring, as many carbon rings. I, I don't know how many people have studied organic chemistry, but I'm sure you know, most people just hate that. I of course have all this. Don't no ask me. I have all that love there. <laughs> but for uh, uh, you have this carbon ring and you have a chlorine, for example. Now if you just change that chlorine to a hydrogen, then you change that hydrogen to a bromine. With just one one small change, you can yeah, transform a pigment to a Then you get a paracetamol. Then you change another thing, and you get a flavor and fragrance which smells like a water melon or something like that. So there are so many uh, that things uh, in that, and a small deviation can create more deviation can create output changes. Absolutely, and then end application changes all. Fantastic. How many countries were added after you joined the business eight years back? I think uh, twenty, maybe twenty, twenty-five countries were added. And how do you do market mapping for growth? Um, so. Just by going out there and uh, talking to customers, like the trade shows really help our business and B two B business. Uh, so in B two B businesses, you would know better than uh, uh, than me because you you know been there, done that, and all of that. Uh, that there is only that much you can push. So in the end, you have to keep augmenting your uh, expertise and pull that way. So of course, we do a lot of every possible. a uh, reputed place for our applications where you know people the right target audience is going to watch we're advertising there we go for a lot of trade shows we are known for our crazy branding we do like for example uh, the last year we had made uh, everybody was dressed as gym trainers and body builders oh wow and on our tra- on our trade show booth where everybody else was suited up but our people were all in flashy colors of 
you know, and we said that we do all the weightlifting for you. We do the, you know, <laughs> rely on us because we do the weightlifting for you. So we do these crazy things which are very unconventional. Are you really going to really build, build for us? I wasn't even there. Well, I wasn't carrying a lot of, I, I could not even attend that show because I was elsewhere for another show at the same time. But then now people carry this off very, very beautifully. Um, um, uh, communication but, is very critical for any organization to express to the potential market of who they are, what they are, what they do differently and how effective they are. So who handles the communication for Sojourne? For example, when you become a global player, right communication and information about you needs to travel the seven seas. Like how you did at the trade show by being different than what the others are yeah. at that particular exhibition. So who handles the communication? Is, is it an outsourced activity? Uh, is it an in-house activity where you're directly involved with your mom and other senior team? How does it happen? So we did try to outsource part of that, uh, that, but we are so passionate about our business that it just did not work and it was never really translated uh, very well. We were always just satisfied with that. Though there are, I did come across some wonderful people, some wonderful agencies, which did some good work for us. Uh, but uh, eventually we realized that there is, because we are in so many places at the same time, there is enough work for an in-house team to uh, deal with that. Now we have an, our own in-house marketing team, which not a lot of chemical companies have to the you know to the uh, to the way we have uh, it has been probably a unique feature uh, and uh, uh, that worked out well because then it is it's enough it's enough control how what and exactly it's given you the desired results. results it's absolutely. given you the desired results absolutely. absolutely you are a third generation entrepreneur India has a lot of family owned uh, businesses which has seen the third generation the fourth generation uh, and so on and so forth yes. what's your idea of getting diluted where uh, other people can come in, uh, it can lead you for faster growth, it can improve the speed of your growth, it can expand the volume of the revenues. What are your thoughts about that as a young entrepreneur? I think you have to be very, very honest about your intentions towards the business. Okay, If you really love your business and want the best for it, then uh, you will evaluate whatever opportunity comes your way uh, with that lens and then always take the right decision. So there are many many promoters uh, who have hastily diluted that stake. There are also a lot of Indian promoters who are so hard and fast. Hum we will never... You are of a fixed mindset. No, I, neither of them because I feel that... Uh, no, that, you are not of a fixed mindset. You are flexible yeah, in mind. Not of a fixed mindset. Not of a fixed mindset at all. We feel that uh, we are committed to growing Saujanya and seeing it through. Okay. So whatever that takes and, uh, and, and, and we might be at one place today but we might be at another place five years later or ten years later and, uh, and uh, the times will change the situation of the business. We'll change, we'll grow, we'll get to, and I also believe in this concept of horizons, you know, like uh, you're standing at one shore, you can see the horizon only up till there. Now, if you swim there, you will see a new horizon. I'm going to make a renewal race. It's a renewal race. Absolutely. It does that. Excellent. So, you're a zero debt company. Uh, you're cash positive. You're yes. uh, very well profitable. By God. So you might be, you might be uh, getting a lot of offers of people coming in and wanting to invest in your organization. So how do you handle those kind of inquiries that happen? Oh, very funnily, we, we have this joke within my family that our uh, equity buyout option, our offers, our uh, people are ch chasing me for that more than my own marriage. So I think that, <laughs> that we will lock it up. But I love the way the acquisition <laughs> then will happen through your marriage as well. But uh, that, that would be, uh, that would be uh, uh, the cheapest acquisition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean, you, you, how do you handle that? Because... Uh, I, as an entrepreneur, I always feel that investors and investment needs to happen with people who can be strategic investors, who can give, who can promise you the growth that you envisage Absolutely. in a much shorter and a faster way and in a much more economical method. Absolutely. So you have a similar thought towards uh, dilution and expansion? I think it will have to be with somebody uh, with a land value system. Okay. If at all that happens uh, for us. And uh, the like, uh, we are actually at the other end of the table where we are looking at purchasing stake in uh, either through our family office or through Saujanya in two different, uh, you know, we've put our hands in so many places and now some of them are really showing us good opportunities. So that's where we are looking at inorganic growth from the other side where we will be coming as strategic partners in somebody else's business. So we are thinking to ourselves that, okay, can we, are we just going to give them money? Because that doesn't interest um, us at all. Like uh, unless we can add some value and uh, some um, some some thought and something uh, really tangible to to that business that we are going to become part of. 
so of course if the tomorrow the tables turn and we're thinking about that for ourselves we'd want somebody with the same intention to partner with but of course right now that is not uh that it happens as this day you know part of this like, like, happen. yeah like i've been doing tears for it every day but it's not something that is that is all well, we are doing our own expansion now like we said like i told you we are pursuing an organic growth in the field that you know we are looking at on the future but the organic side also there's uh we just acquired a new parcel of land we acquired more than nine acres of land at the jnpt port so it is at the special economic zone and so develop a new brand. Type of new, yeah, and there's so many opportunities there for you know making in India and taking to the world, uh, especially in our Indian. Into sense globalization. globalization. Absolutely. Into sense globalization. Absolutely. So that is keeping us very engaged, uh, meaningfully right now. All of those. So, do you have a mechanism to give measurable uh, goal setting for your R&D department? Because being a specialty uh, chemical company. You need to keep innovating. You need to keep adding more products to your our, kidney. Our R and D works only with specific goal setting and specific projects, which are very, very market driven and market led. Uh, there is very far and few things that we are doing, which uh, and we need to do those things also, which are more like fundamental research and you know uh, they, they add to our own knowledge bank. But ninety percent of the work or more is directly related to the market, and I think that's the only way. So, do you operate in a format where the customers are having a particular want, and you develop that product for them, or do you also create products which are not available in the market and creating a market for them? Both the things, both the things. That today, if we look at uh, sustainability, has become a buzzword. But what we've been slowly and smoothly transitioning, uh, all our existing formulation for paint and other traditional applications, you know, for automotive and stuff like that, we've been transitioning them to greener chemistries sequentially over time. Today, if you look at Sojourner's portfolio, more than sixty percent of our products have a green component to them. So whether they are uh, VOC free or heavy metal free or based on an actual plant based. material so whatever it might be but more than 60% of them are sustainable in uh, that sense so that is something which we did because we've been passionate about that now of course a lot of people are asking but we we did a lot of work on that uh, you know before the market became ready also then that bit and then of course on the uh, solution side because people are today um as a b2b business you are not actually selling product people are coming to you because they think that surgeon that can help them with x y z and uh, it might be something that you've never seen before it might be something that you're doing day and night it's your bread and butter so we encounter both of these uh, equally there are a lot of things which uh, we've never seen before uh, but then we kind of uh, 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 somebody has trusted us with that so then we still do our best there are things that we've been doing day in and day out and that something with somebody wants and we are able to provide with, uh, uh, them with that so it's both the, it's all all the different aspects excellent are. so you are a environmentally conscious company that's so, a very absolutely. good thing to i am so proud uh, to say that uh, and it was entirely our team support we were a very a uh, very strong uh, operations team who has done in, so incredibly well um so, Despite our volumes, so for example, our volumes are growing twenty, thirty percent every year. But our uh, water usage, waste, you, waste uh, uh, generation, all of those parameters about sustainability, they are reducing. And as much as the volumes are increasing by exactly that much amount, those things are reducing. So, excellent, yeah. excellent. One last question to you, young man. Uh, the last question is: Where do you see your organization in the next five years? Uh, we'd like to um, have. And so the nine acre parcel will be operational by then. That that should be hopefully full to full at full capacity by then. Absolutely. Uh, but more than that, more than uh, you know, of course, we want to be in more geographies and deeper in those geographies. Have X Y Z percent market share. All of those visions aside, uh, we really want to uh, be a reliable uh, partner uh, uh, for for the entire. ecosystem whether it is uh, in in a health care whether it is in traditional chemical application for emerging chemical applications we would like to be a, a driver of value and uh, and growth and and goodness we want to do good we want to be good at and deliver solutions which uh, make the world a better place as there we really like to be and as the friends that is uh, jashan bhumkar all of just 32 years of age third generation entrepreneur head on his shoulders looking in the right direction working for the right achievements and goals having a very environmental friendly mindset not compromising on values and uh, qualities that he must have definitely gained from his grandfather and uh, definitely taught a lot by his mother in the actual line of business that he is engaged and involved with so this is the new young enterprising india uh, trying to make india a global leader through organizations like saujanya and through young entrepreneurs 
like Jashan. This is Agnello Rajesh here. Uh, this is a series of inspiring conversations to motivate you to have similar mindset which can make this country great and make you personally super successful and contribute you to this society. Thank you so much. Thank you.